Hey, so I built this hutch. And if you would like to know how you could build a hutch, well, you can watch this video. And don't forget to click subscribe right down there and hit that little bell too, because that'll notify you when I put out new videos. So enjoy the video. Lordy, 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 we have got a lot to cover in this video, so I'm going to try and condense it down to be as quick and simple as possible. So the first thing you're going to want to do is mill up a bunch of stock wood. For this build, we are doing the entire cabinet out of solid white oak with just a little bit of white oak ply. So we start by milling down a bunch of 8 quarter white oak and then cutting it into uniform strips from which we can build the carcass of our hutch. With all of the strips milled down to the proper size for the carcass, we start cutting them to the right length. Now, we're going to start by building the outer two walls of our cabinet. Each wall is going to look something like what you're seeing on your screen right now. The only difference is instead of a giant hole in the middle, you're going to fill that hole with a piece of quarter inch plywood. First, we mark the length of our legs onto the stock pieces of wood. Next, we're going to have to cut a quarter inch groove on the interior of each of our side panel pieces that will catch our floating quarter inch white oak panel. For this, we're just using a quarter inch dado stack on the table saw. We start with our top and bottom piece first because we can run those all the way through. Now with our side pieces, we're going to have to do a combination of drop cuts and stop cuts on the table saw. So the first thing I like to do is take two pieces of blue tape and mark where my table saw blade starts and also where my table saw blade stops. In order to do all four side pieces without having to change our fence, two of the pieces will need to be drop cuts while two of the pieces will be stop cuts. You'll see what I mean here in just a second as I run them through. Now a drop cut is exactly what it sounds like. You are dropping the piece onto the spinning blade so that you can start the cut back from the end of the piece. This allows us to put our quarter inch groove on the side piece without cutting into the exposed leg. That way we can hide that groove inside the framing and you will never know it's there. So. Do two of the pieces with the drop cut technique. If you've never done this before, just go very slow and make sure the piece is secure against the fence. Then for the other two pieces, you're going to do the opposite in what I like to call a stop cut. So you're going to run the piece all the way through until it is two inches away from where the blade starts. Then you're going to turn the table saw off, let the blade stop spinning, and then lift the piece off. This is going to create the exact same cut as the drop cut, but reversed for the opposite side. Do this to all your pieces and you should now have a quarter of an inch channel on the interior of both of your side pieces. Then finally, we have to take some floppy floppy quarter inch white oak plywood, run it through the table saw and cut it down to the right size to make up our interior floating panels. You could use solid stock for this, but whenever I'm doing floating panels, I like to use plywood because, you know, wood movement and all that junk. Next, we're going to drop the panel into our cut pieces, making sure everything fits nicely, and then we will get ready to join it all together. Should look just like this. Well, get ready to hate me. To join this entire piece, I will be using, you guessed it, the Festool Domino Joiner. Now before you get all bent out of shape, I feel like I say this in every single one of my YouTube videos involving the Domino Joiner. If you don't have one, don't fret, use a dowling jig, it's just a $60 version of the Domino Joiner that you can do by hand. I'll even put a link to a dowling jig down in the video description, so just get off my back. But for this video, I use the domino joiner to mortise out all my holes for my corresponding dominoes, and then I hook three of my side pieces together, leaving one side open so that I can slip in my quarter inch panel. 
Now I'm inserting this panel without glue. Remember it is a floating panel. That just allows the hardwood around it to move without putting any extra strain on that plywood panel. Then I lock it in place with that fourth and final piece. Next I'm just going to clamp the whole thing together and do the exact same thing to my identical piece for the opposite side. When it's all said and done, you should have two pieces that look exactly like this one you're staring at. With our two side pieces in clamps, I jump over and start working on the face frame portion of our cabinet as well as the back two support pieces that will make up the entirety of our cabinet box. Again, I'm just hooking everything together with the domino joiner, quick and easy. For this cabinet, our face frame is pretty simple. It's just going to have four cabinet doors, so three pieces in total, not too bad. But before we can hook it all together, I needed to run the top piece on the front of my face frame and the top support piece on the back of the cabinet through the table saw, putting in an eighth inch groove to hold the Z-clip fasteners that we'll use to hold the top of the cabinet on. With that groove cut, it is time to glue up our face frame. Whenever I have face frames that aren't supported on either side, I like to glue them up with these little 90 degree holder thingy-mabobs from Woodpecker's Tools. No, they're not paying me to say that. I just really like them. They're super handy and it just makes sure that everything is glued up nice and square. Now this is the portion of the video where I tell you that I forgot a few steps. When I was cutting my side pieces, putting a quarter inch groove for my floating panel, I completely forgot that we also need quarter inch grooves for the back panel. So I had to add that quarter inch groove to my back support pieces as well as my two side pieces. It would have been a little easier to do that before they were glued up, but it worked just the same. So with everything cut and our face frame hooked together, we can start putting the entire box together and marking it for our joinery. Again. We're just hooking it all together with dominoes, or dowels, sorry, whatever you may have in front of you. Use that to hook your cabinet together. Cut to some stock footage of me using my domino joiner. la di da di da looks pretty good. Putting in those mortises, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now. I have to run a piece of quarter inch ply through the table saw so that I can cut the floating panel for the back of my cabinet. So after running it through the table saw, I just cut it to size using a track saw. Yep, I cut right into my outfeed table, but it's old and I just don't care. Then with all of my pieces cut and my holes mortised for my dominoes, I just slap the whole thing together with some glue, dominoes, and then I just get it all clamped up, and voila, you have the starts of a cabinet. Next, I wanted to figure out the bottom, so I grabbed some toilet paper. Oh, wait, not that kind of bottom. To hold the bottom in place, I cut a bunch of strips of stock white oak that we're gonna glue up on the bottom of the cabinet to create a recessed little channel for our bottom plate to sit down on. So I take all my little strips and just glue them right on, making sure that you leave enough room for your base plate to sit flush or just below the base of your cabinet. Then with all of our supporting strips glued on, I flip the cabinet back over and you should have a nice recessed little shelf where you can rest your bottom. Not, not your bottom, the bottom plate of your cabinet. Y you know what I mean. Anyways, I cut down a piece of three quarter inch oak ply, sanding the edges slightly, just so that it doesn't chip out when I push it in place. Then I add just a little bit of glue onto that recessed shelf, and I pop it in there. Next, I use a 23 gauge pin nailer, just to hold the entire thing in place while the glue dries. I'm using 23 gauge pins so you're not going to see these when it's all said and done. 
and there you go you've got a bottom next we slide in our dividing piece down the center to separate left cabinet from right cabinet now I've seen a lot of people try and build the center divider in a cabinet into their framing this involves adding some dadoed grooves into that front divider piece and I tell you what it's just more headache than it's worth you're not gonna see any of that and I'm gonna show you how to lock that center divider in place without any of that fuss so first you start by just getting your divider in there and making sure it is nice and square next I'm just gonna send some 23 gauge pins through the back panel again this is not supportive at all it's just to hold it in place so it's not moving around then out of stock white oak I just make this little cap piece to put on the top and I secure it in place with a few pocket holes yes I know ugly pocket holes but it's tucked up underneath the top of the cabinet so guess what you're not actually gonna see them then I pre-drill a few holes through my top plate into my plywood and I just sink some cabinet screws through that top plate right into my piece of ply. Then I flip the whole cabinet over and well, I just send some screws right up through the bottom. And just like that, your center divider is locked very securely. Now it's not hooked to the front face frame, but it's three quarter inch ply, so it really doesn't have any give with this small of a piece. Next, I cut some little strips and I glue and tack them onto that three-quarter piece. This is going to be a simple rest for my internal shelf. And I add another piece to the outside. This one just held in place with a few, yes, ugly pocket holes. But I position the pocket holes facing up so that they also will be completely hidden by the shelf itself. Ha! <laughs> that rhymed. Shelf. Itself. <laughs> Anyways, I cut down my shelves and I do have to add just a little notch in each corner. Not each corner of each individual shelf, but one corner of each shelf so that it can sit in there. Just like that. And then I cover up the fact that it's plywood by adding a simple piece of quarter inch stock onto the front of each shelf. And with that, our shelves are done. Time to build our top. I decided to forego showing you the boring milling process on this one, but I pre-milled up some pieces of five quarter white oak, and I, well, rub some glue on them and clamp them together. How about that? I didn't use any biscuits or dominoes either, so just sue me, why don't you? Then once it's all dry, I take it out of clamps, I plop it on top of my cabinet and I use the track saw to cut it to the right size. Then I use a little round over bit with the router just to give it a nice soft top edge. Man, now it's time to mill all the lumber for our cabinet doors. I really didn't want to mill so I thought maybe if I played a sweet melody on the tin whistle it would just magically turn into perfectly milled pieces. Holy cow. It actually worked. So for this cabinet, we are doing four shaker style cabinet doors with glass recessed into the back of each door. So each door is gonna be made up of approximately five pieces like the ones you see in front of you. Four outer pieces with that middle kind of decorative brace. Now because we are recessing the glass into the back, you have to make that little decorative brace an eighth inch skinnier than your outer pieces. That way, once we router out the groove for the glass to sit inside the back of the door, it'll sit flush against that internal brace. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is first mark out where that brace is gonna land on your outer rails of your cabinet door, and then you're gonna wanna router out that groove right in the middle first before you glue your doors up, or else, if you try and do it afterwards, your router bit's gonna run right smack dab into that middle support, and you're gonna be cursing and have a tough time getting that groove where you want it. 
To make this groove, I'm just using a half inch rabbit bit with a bottom mounted bearing on the router set to a depth of just over an eighth of an inch. As you can see, you just want to do just a little pass to clear that middle brace. You don't need to do the whole thing quite yet. We can do that once it's all glued up, just to make sure we don't go too far. But you can see our middle support is just the same height as our routed out groove. Then with our grooves routed out where our internal brace is going to be, I again pull out the domino joiner, or dowling jig, whichever you prefer, and I hook all the doors together. Just, you know, like you should. Two pieces on each end, support in the middle, and voila. You clamp them all up and let them dry. Here's a good example of why you got to do that small routed groove first. You can see the bit runs smack into that middle brace. But with our doors all glued together, now you can finish off the rest of the groove with your router. The glass that we'll be inserting in these cabinet doors is rectangular and obviously the router bit will leave a rounded corner so you'll have to go back with a chisel and just square off each corner but then your glass should fit very nicely in your cabinet door. I just ordered this glass from a local glass shop. Any glass shop should cut glass custom to size for any door you will want to make. Next I mark out where my European style hinges are going to be drilled in the door and I take the door over to the drill press and I drill out a hole in the appropriate location to catch my hinges. See, look, the hinges fit right there. Originally, I designed this cabinet to have overmount doors, but there was a slight change of plan on the client's part and they wanted inset doors. So to accommodate the inset hinges, I did have to add a few little blocks inside the cabinet to catch the hinge. While those dry, I decided to jump over and sand my top. Then I brought my doors over. Now lots of people will use playing cards or spacers, which would work totally fine, but I've come to enjoy just using a few clamps to clamp my doors right onto the face frame itself, and then I can adjust them up or down to get the perfect spacing. And then they're all locked in place, and I can just screw my hinges into the sides of the cabinets, which you can see me doing right now. But as you can see, when you close the doors, they go in a little too far. So you can either put a magnetic latch to catch them, or in this case, I decided to keep it very simple, and I just glued a little oak stop block on the top of the cabinet frame to act as a stop and keep my cabinet doors at the perfect placing, placement? I don't know. But anyways, you can see it works very nicely. Ooh, gotta love that slow close action. Smooth. Now that our cabinet is completely assembled, it is time to disassemble it. I know, weird, but it's kind of what you do when you build cabinets. You get everything together, make sure that it fits right, and then, well, you rip it all apart and you finish it, which is what we're going to do now. First, of course, we sand the entire thing thoroughly. For this cabinet, the client wanted a black exterior and a clear-coated interior. For this, I'm using a product from Rubio Monocoat, their Pre-Color Easy Intense Black. Now this is a base color that dyes the entire piece this very dark black and then you go over the base color with the corresponding oil. In this case I went over the entire thing with the Rubio Monocoat Black Oil Plus 2C. That gives it a nice sheen and it also adds a little more color to ensure the piece is, well, very very black as you can see right here. Then with all my black and oil on the exterior, as well as the doors, I finished the interior with Rubio Monocoat just pure, as well as the interior shelves. 
Oh, and then I hook on the top with those Z-clip fasteners, like I was mentioning earlier. These are handy dandy, and we cut our grooves so we're ready to go. Next, we insert the glass into our doors. I just secure it in place with these little cabinet glass holder doohickeys that I picked up from rockler.com. They work pretty good, and what do you know, they're pretty close to the right color for this piece. Then I just clip my doors back in place, and well, at this point, I'm pretty much finito. That's um, finished in Spanish. And just like that, we have a very nice looking storage hutch. This is destined for a bathroom, but this same design could be used for a living room, entryway, or even a outside patio. Probably wouldn't last very long, but you could do it. <laughs> 